Hello there, thanks a lot for coming by PosterCentral.com's video blog today. I'm Pete Howard. And the Jefferson Airplane in 1967. Boy, those two ingredients make up just about the quintessential psychedelic concert poster, with both the band and the timing. So this was from the spring of 1967, May 19th to be exact, and all the spring of 67 gave us was the release of both Somebody to Love and White Rabbit as singles. <laughs> oh my goodness. And of course, The Summer of Love directly followed. So you've got this just marvelous small town concert poster from about four hours south of San Francisco in San Luis Obispo, California. Full disclosure, that's my hometown. So this was at a college with a unique one-off concert poster designed, yep, by a couple of college art students. <laughs> wow, it all fits together so perfectly. So I'll get to the wording here in just a moment, but first check out this central image. Well, wow, look at this, this, you know, this picture they dredged up somehow of a triplane. Isn't that amazing? Well, wow, complete with an observation deck on top and a, you know, zigzag stairway from the ground up to the fuselage and skis with wheels on them for landing gear. <laughs> Someone really had a lot of fun cooking this thing up. But, you know, that's something that's sort of consistent. It's, uh, it's one of the fun parts of collecting airplane concert posters is that the early ones just had the use of, you know, crazy airplanes in their graphics. In fact, um, let me show you pictures, images of a couple, not the actual posters, but images of just what I mean. And, uh, hello, what better place to start than this? The very first Bill Graham concert poster, February of 1966. And uh, as you well know, that central image, take a look at that, a biplane that's a horse plane. So uh, <laughs> yeah, that's about as imaginative and unlikely as it gets. And then also from 1966, yeah, check out this baby, a familiar image. And look at that wacky plane. Wow. Looks almost like a, you know, submersible with wings. I don't know. These, you know, these are designs that make no sense aeronautically, but they're just tons of fun. So, okay, we'll do a little bit more of a conventional airplane. Here we have um, 1968. We jump ahead a couple of years for this one. And this is from the Kaleidoscope in Los Angeles, very well known for their round posters. Now, the red plane you see is a triplane, indeed. And, uh, you know, those things basically had their heyday in the first quarter of the 20th century, but ultimately the three-wing concept just proved impractical, or unpractical, whichever. <laughs> they didn't fly that well, let's put it that way. But would you like a conventional airplane on your JA concert poster? Okay, how about this one? There you go, <laughs> that's one everybody can understand. New York City, just a couple of weeks after the BG-1 poster I showed you, with a straight-ahead prop airplane. But you know something? I don't know. To my eye, it looks kind of out of place. Just incongruous, you know, a normal airplane for this psychedelic rock band. But, you know, then again, the airplane were sort of a fish out of water in New York City anyway, at least in 1967. So this horizontal paper poster measures about 14 by 18 inches, give or take a quarter inch. And design-wise, interestingly, the band's name is horizontal, along with a couple of images we see on there, but all the other writing is perpendicular to that. So people had to turn their heads, literally, to read it. Sort of got me thinking, I was wondering, especially in the psychedelic world, if there was ever a concert poster made where some of that information was just flat out upside down. Really, and not confusing, but making it hard for people to uh, get the information down. But I, ma I imagine there's at least one out there, but I've never seen it in all my years of collecting. So, speaking of uh, odd angles, I'm going to go ahead and turn this for you so you can see what's on here. Let's start with the band's initials, the J in Jefferson and the A in Airplane. Well, in the J there, as you can see, it says Plastic Fantastic Lover. <laughs> and in the A, it says embryonic journey. Now it's interesting how, you know, instead of Somebody to Love or White Rabbit, they use these two deep album tracks on the poster, both from Surrealistic Pillow, the group's new album, which had just 
entered Billboard magazine's national Top 20 Albums chart. All of the information is presented in two sections. This is the red section. Interesting to note how the designers, by the way, went to straight block lettering for this information, even though it's presented in a fashion to sort of look psychedelic. So it does say on here, Friday, May 19th, 1967, the year is given, Cal Poly Men's Gym, 8 p.m. And by the way, Cal Poly stands for California Polytechnic State University. Still a very thriving campus, and in fact very hard to get into GPA-wise. And then the words in the blue area say, presented by College Union. Students, a buck seventy-five, two and a quarter, and two fifty, and general admission, of course, just says general, a little bit higher at two and a quarter, two seventy-five, and three dollars. Now, interestingly, notice how the G in general, down there at the very bottom, and even the T in tickets, just run off the poster. Now, you know, there's, I would say there's nothing psychedelic about that. It's, it's like the design they made of the poster didn't quite fit into the paper stock that they had available. Well, remember, I mentioned this poster is about 14 by 18 inches. Well, Fillmore posters, directly to the north, were 14 by 20 inches. So, maybe, just maybe, you know, they designed uh, this poster for that size paper, and the college print shop had just this size. But that is, believe me, pure speculation, just something to think about. I just don't think it's normal even for psychedelic posters to have big chunks of those first letters missing and, you know, just running off into the white margin. So, speculation. And then your ticket locations are given to buy the tickets at. It says on the poster here, Tickets ASI Office standing for Associated Students Incorporated, the student body. And then two locations given off campus, Browns and Bennett's. Now there's no printer's credit or a union bug to be found anywhere on this poster, but you know, again, it was probably just done in the college print shop. So there was a recording made of this show, probably by an audience member, and that recording was scrutinized by the 500-page Jefferson Airplane concert book called Take Me to a Circus Tent. And they report that three songs were performed at this Cal Poly show for the very last time. Tobacco Road, And I Like It, and Running Round This World. All three of them from the band's first album with Sidney Anderson, Jefferson Airplane Takes Off. Although that third song, Running Round This World, was quickly yanked off the album over objectionable lyrics but, you know, would turn up in the 70s on the first of the reissues and compilations. And on this very night, two airplane songs made their worldwide debut in concert, but they weren't from Surrealistic Pillow. They were from the upcoming After Bathing at Baxter's album, still months away from release. And those two songs were The Ballad of You and Me and Puniel and Young Girl Sunday Blues, played for the first time live ever at this show. Boy, the Jefferson Airplane in May of 1967 in a small California town of just about 25,000 people. What do they do in June? Rest on their laurels? Um, with a couple of hit singles, I don't think so. The very next month, the Airplane played on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson, American Bandstand with Dick Clark, they played the Monterey Pop Festival, and they appeared on the Smothers Brothers Comedy Hour TV show. So. Yeah, you could say this was a pretty hot time of their career. And a really fun, one-off, small-town concert poster. Just love it. Thanks a lot for dropping by. Take care, and we'll see you again for something soon.